Hey, it's uh, Christian in New Orleans again um, with a vinyl record collection update number seven. Um, in the background, it's Demi Borgir, Death Cult Armageddon. Happy to have that in the collection. Uh, and like I've said before, I'm not, not a huge Demu fan. Um, that is just one that I particularly enjoy owning. So, uh, let's get into it. Uh, the first that I have is a used copy of Ben Lizzie's Jailbreak. In my opinion, this is their best, uh, the best record that they ever made. Um, it's the only one they got any sort of uh, recognition or play in the States. Pioneers of the twin lead guitar attack uh, that bands like Iron Maiden took off with and ran with. That's the inner sleeve. And I, I, I have no idea if this is like a complete record or anything like that. It's it's something that I found. And he's been really cheap. Um, that's a label just on black. Uh, it's awesome. I mean, this this is no doubt a, a killer album, uh, and I feel like it's more appreciated these days uh, than it ever was back when it was its first released in the states. And, um, yeah, so definitely check that out. It, mine's in in pretty good condition. I, not a condition I can, I can complain about. Um, been cleaned up or whatever, it was a little bit dirtier than, than what I just should, but it's fine. Um, great record. Next up is a used copy of Dio's Sacred Art. And I think this is Dio's last record, last solo record to go gold status. The first two, uh, Holy Diver and Last in Line, of course, were both, I believe, platinum. It's on black vinyl, Warner Brothers labels. Pretty sure this is the first pressing, but not, not certain, not positive. Same with the, the Thin Lizzy. I'm sure that, that record probably came out um, across the pond first, and then that is probably a first U.S. pressing. This is 1976, and I think this one is 85. 1985. So, yeah, I've, uh, I love Dio. Dio's awesome. Uh, but that's probably like the last Dio solo record that I care to own. Uh, I don't know. We'll see, I guess. And I know we talked about um, Holy Grails, and this is this is up there too. Uh, it's Ozzy Osbourne's Blizzard of Oz, and this was formerly owned by. I don't know if you can see that. Tori. Do you know how I know that? Because some bitch Tori Marshall wrote her name on the fucking inner sleeve. And this is uh, just on black vinyl. This is Jet Records, and I think this is 1980 or 81. I think it's the first US pressing. I could be totally wrong on that, but. Uh, 1981. CBS, distributed by Jet Records, whatever, uh, a, you know, a classic, uh, a, regardless of genre, it's a, it's a classic, um, and this, that vinyl, I don't know, you probably couldn't see from the, from what I showed, but it's fucking flawless, I mean, absolutely flawless, pristine, like, it's only been played a couple times, so, um, Anybody has any ideas on how to clean up ballpoint pen off of uh, record jackets, 
please uh, please refer me or let me know. Drop me a comment, please. Because other than that chick, Tori Marshall, writing her fucking name across Ozzy Osbourne in ballpoint pens. I mean, that's, that record's in really, really, really good shape. So I would love to have it as, as nearly mint as I could possibly make it. So, so the next one is... Uh, is a, is a really neat band, really neat band, uh, and I bought this from Hell's Headbangers Records. And when I bought it, um, it was described as having uh, coverware or slight coverware, and so it was a discounted price. And the reason that it interested me is because there was members of Midnight in this band, and this record is Mach Two, and it's self-titled, and I think it was pressed this year. Um, but if you look on the back cover of it, I'll zoom in. Bass is played by Jamie Walters. Well, Jamie Walters is Athenor. Uh, basically the, uh, the only guy in Midnight. Um, and this record is really good. It's a Cleveland band, and they call it like a super group or whatever, but I've never heard of any of the bands that, uh, any of the other members were in. Um, other than Midnight uh, and this is just its what it sounds like is to me it's all kind of thick not probably not 180 gram vinyl but thick vinyl, thick white vinyl um, it sounds like straight Iron Maiden worship uh, Iron, not Iron Maiden uh, Judas Priest worship Judas Priest, Motorhead worship which there is nothing wrong with that at all in my book. Um, and uh, not to get too chan tangential to the discussion, but don't ever place your faith in football teams, ever, college or pro. They will always let you down. Uh, I say, put your faith in dogs dogs will never let you down they'll always happy to see you always eager to please moving on speaking of uh, this is one that, that probably could be considered a a holy grail uh, this is something that I found in a used record store a new used record store a newish or a a newly founded used record store to be clear uh, this is uh, the best of metal blade and I think it's volume one and uh, this is one that's it, it's a story release uh, it's a gatefold and I mean, it features tracks by guys that went on and made incredible, incredible albums. Uh, I'll just read off the, the lineup here. Slayer with Chemical Warfare, Trouble with the Tempter, Hallow's Eve, Bitch, Celtic Frost, Circle of Tyrants, Fate's Warning, The Apparition. Uh, who else is on here? Let's see, Attacker, Warlord, Slayer with Necrophiliac, Metal Church, Voivod with Blower, Voivod is spelt in two words. By the way, I don't know if you can see that. Right there. That's not right. Brian Slagle. Uh, Hyrax. Uh, an incredible, incredible, incredible album. Um, it is legendary. Legendary. And it's just on black vinyl. The original Metal Blade labels. Uh, this is in pretty good shape. And that's the most that I've ever spent on a used record. I think I gave uh, $25 for that. And it, in used condition or whatever. You know, the condition that you see it in. And, and of course, I cleaned it up just like we talked about in the previous video. And, you know, please, no problem or whatever. So, so next up is Bolt Thrower, Realm of Chaos. And this is another one of those uh, 
earache FDR pressings. This is uh, not a gatefold, uh, but it does have a high gloss inner sleeve. And this is not, uh, I mean, when I think of uh, Bolter or Sam, I don't, I don't think of this record. It's all red vinyl. This is more of a grind sound from both of them. Uh, and this is this is really early on for them. I think this is like '88, maybe. Originally, it's 1989. Originally, um, and it's a 2012 repressing by Earache. Um, and it's, I mean. Listen, my affinity for bolt thrower is, uh, has been well documented if you've watched my videos. Uh, and it, it's just kind of one of those must-haves. Uh, it, it's a neat sound from them. I mean, I, I like to hear them like that, a little more rural, a little more, a little more grind than their, I mean, their riffs are fucking sick. Absolutely fucking sick. Uh, yeah. Whatever. Um, Alright guys, I think that's going to do it for tonight. Uh, thanks for watching, I appreciate it. And uh, as always, keep metal here.